What's going on, YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatch back with another video, and hopefully everybody's having a great holiday season. Got some time off from work, so I figured I would uh, chill out with you guys, shoot some videos, have a good time, and uh, show you a couple things I'd picked up recently. I uh, just put up a pickups video a couple weeks ago, but I uh, I grabbed some more stuff, so I guess you know tis the season to buy myself stuff. Oh, some of these might be from other people too. Uh, but uh, oh, I gotta give shout outs to uh, 4K Cinema HD who had uh, given a shout out to me in one of his recent videos and a great guy, killer channel. He's got an amazing Blu-ray collection and uh, definitely do yourself a favor, check out some of his uh, pickup videos and b between him and uh, uh, Steve Vincent Furness, I pretty much live, live vicariously through their Blu-ray collections because uh, you know, I haven't been able to pick up a lot of the, the Criterions and all the kind of cool stuff like the Arrow videos and all that stuff lately. I also love his out and about videos, you know, just kind of taking you around town and uh, showing you what it's like out there and you know hitting a couple places to go shopping and all that stuff so cool channel so yeah check out 4k cheers brother and uh what else what have i gotten well yesterday i actually just picked up i haven't even had a chance to open it yet but uh grabbed the collectible steel version of jurassic world still not sure if i love this whole kind of weird circular disc packaging but forget i check it out the price was right also grabbed uh mission impossible rogue nation and I uh, haven't taken this for a spin yet, but I will over the next couple days. Um, and I grabbed Minions. Uh, not the best <laughs> movie overall. I mean, it, it didn't quite uh, capture the, the fun of the Minions from Despicable Me 1 and 2. And that's mostly because they were in those films for a limited amount of time. But once you stretch them over a full theatrical length running time... Yeah, the you know the kind of joke kind of runs a little thin, but it's got some new mini movies and it was fun enough, so I forget to grab that. And uh, what else? I got a couple new um, review screeners in from Scream Factory, so I got to check these out. A uh, new Takashi Miike flick called Over Your Dead Body. I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Um, so we'll be doing a spotlight review on that shortly. And I just got this in yesterday, the uh, new Blu-ray of William Friedkin's The Guardian. And I have not seen that since probably watching it on cable. So it's going to be a treat to check this out in uh, high def for the first time. Uh, and uh, Big Lots had a bunch of new stuff that I, I, you know, I kind of go through and check out what they have for Blu-rays on a fairly regular basis. But uh, it had been pretty stagnant recently. But uh, I had grabbed a bunch of stuff recently. And between that and like Christmas tree shops and those places, it's a great place to find, especially old uh, Sony discs. Sony's been kind of farming out its uh, its uh, catalog titles, and when companies like Echo Bridge, etc., put those out again, sometimes they, you know they'll, they'll keep the 1080p resolution. But as far as they're concerned, that's the beginning and ending of what's important about HD, and they they tend to omit a lot of the lossless surround sound tr you know tracks. Sometimes they'll even have just like 2.0 straight up you know Dolby Digital, um, so which is a complete shame given how you know, amazing modern movie soundtrack sound and how much work is put into them. So uh, regardless of whether or not they do have any crappy renditions that have been put out again, if I see something Columbia Pictures or Sony, I'll usually pick it up and they're usually only a couple bucks. So uh, I grabbed this actually from my wife, Johnny Depp's Secret Window. I, uh, I'm a big fan of David Kep's work. I did not really enjoy the twist of this movie. I, uh, I was completely enthralled by the, the mystery that was set up and... Uh, was really just amazed at, at how it was going to unravel, how it, how you were going to figure out what was going on, how Johnny Depp was going to, you know, solve this scenario, and then it, uh, you know, it just says purple, and then you're like, whoa! I never thought it was going to be purple. So, and a twist. I, I don't enjoy when twists don't like necessarily inform everything that is and enrich everything that has come before it. When it's just something. You know, out of left field, they, yeah, it doesn't, especially in a movie that's kind of set up as a mystery, it doesn't really have a, a distinct payoff. So that said, I enjoyed the performances, etc. And uh, it looks like there's some special features. No? Yeah, it comes some deleted scenes and featurettes, etc. like that. So, And uh, David kept commentary, so I'll check that out. I grabbed uh, Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan, too, for a couple bucks. For some reason, I had never gotten this over the years. Uh, big fan of his film Pi. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Cool stuff. So it's a two-disc set. And uh, 
Likewise, I think I had a DVD of this one point, but I haven't seen this in ages. Jet Li, the one. Some uh, classic uh, kind of crossover kung fu meets Hollywood material. Um, yeah, James Wong directs. Uh, this I was actually psyched to find, and only for a couple bucks. I uh, likewise haven't seen this since watching it on VHS. And uh, really cool flick, and kind of led into the style of Leon Nikita, also known as La Femme Nikita, Luc Besson's flick with uh, Anne Periode. And uh, Jean Reno actually plays a cleaner similar to Leon in this film. Uh, yeah, I hadn't seen this in a while, so it's great. It, it's definitely, it ties in with. Leon and the fifth element too. In fact, all three movies start with essentially the same shot and uh, you know, both feature a uh, a woman as a weapon in some fashion. So yeah, haven't seen that in a while. Really cool stuff. Uh, this actually I haven't seen. So I figured I had to grab it. Huge fan of Donnie Yen and Sammy Hong. So I got Ip Man 2, Legend of the Grandmaster. So uh, another one of those well goes. Wilco puts out a lot of stuff then that you can end up getting at like big lots for like two or three dollars on Blu-ray. So uh, looking forward to checking this out for sure. And I believe it has uh, the original uh, Cantonese. Yeah, it does have the Cantonese dialogue as well. Uh, this is another film I wasn't a huge fan of. I'm a huge fan of the series, but this uh, left me severely disappointed when I saw it in theaters back in what 2008. But X Files, I want to believe. Uh, you know, it's got some interesting stuff in it. It's got Billy Connolly in it, which is always a plus. And, um, but yeah, this was, yeah, it was barely an X-File. I mean, it was, the whole entire movie was really just about Scully's crisis of faith. And, uh, I want to say it was a Monster of the Week episode, but I would have loved if it was a Monster of the Week episode. There really was nothing supernatural, nothing, nothing really interesting going on in this thing. So, like, if you want to see the human centipede watered down a million percent, uh, mixed with a little bit of, uh, like, the Apostle, yeah, there, enjoy that. Uh, but this is the ultimate X-File edition with three hours of special features, so I figured it's time for me to give it another chance, especially since I've been binge-watching X-Files on HD lately. And, uh, what else? Ah, my friend Freddy, we've been kind of trading stuff back and forth. He sent me a copy of the kind of public domain uh, fan edit of The Matrix, The Matrix Grindhouse Edition, Robots vs. Kung Fu. And, uh, yeah, this thing is a total trip. It's got Chai Young Fat in the back because, of course, he's in The Matrix. Um, but they they go through and they kind of work out a new version of The Matrix as if it was a found, like, 70s Grindhouse film. So they yeah kind of add new music to it and change around the sound effects. And, and one of the cool things is you have a movie that's inherently modern, like The Matrix, and, and even the cinematography. There's nothing you can really do to make that cinematography look 70s. They try, and they do a really good job at it. Um, but when they get to the crazy CG effect scenes, it's great. They actually delve into um, behind-the-scenes footage from like the, the DVDs and all that stuff and put it in there so you can see the wires and everything, and it looks fake, and... Uh, I thought that was a really, really clever way to integrate that footage and, and make it, you know, a 70s style grindhouse picture. A uh, lot of crazy music cues they throw in here uh, adds to that level of, of verisimilitude. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of extras on here too, like commentaries from the fan editor and uh, isolated soundtrack and an older work print, etc. So this is, uh, I was talking with Freddie about this, and it's definitely one of those things you got to put on at like 2 in the morning or something when you, you've been having a really busy day and you got one eye open and you're kind of questioning reality. That's when you fire this thing up. <laughs> and you wonder in the morning, wait, did I see that? Was Did that really happen? Um, Freddie also sent me a copy of this, which I'm um, super psyched to get. The uh, I have to nicely hold it up. The first issue of Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So... Uh, pretty cool collaboration between DC and IDW. I was a huge Ninja Turtles fan back in the day. I was there at Ground Zero when Eastman and Laird were putting out their their wares, and I remember the, the feeding frenzy that came out and the indie comics boom that happened thereafter. Uh, so it was really cool. And then, of course, being a huge Batman fan, this was a treat, and it covers a lot of stuff in the first issue because it's got to you know, kind of collide two entire... Um, you know, franchises, and then you're, you're going to want to see some of the key 
you know, side characters and everything like that, too. So it does a really good job of implementing all that. And uh, the, uh, the artwork is just killer. I mean, the uh, introduction of the turtles is uh, yeah, stellar stuff. And, uh, yeah, had a blast with it. Really looking forward to seeing where uh, where the second issue is going to go because it just kind of sets up the mystery and uh, sets the playing field up and everything like that. So really cool release. And I also got this sucker... Because I um, last weekend I did a uh, I moderated a Q and A panel with the author Robert Schneckenberg, but he came out with a big bad book of Bill Murray, and this thing is uh, definitely a, a coffee table dream. It's uh, A through Z, and not only does it get into uh, just stories about Bill Murray and and a listing of all his films. But it most interestingly gets into the films that he he turned down, especially in the wake of Ghostbusters, when he went on a little bit of a Hollywood sabbatical. And it's it's great. It's got all these interesting pieces here and there. You're like, wow, Bill Murray was offered that? And uh, yeah, fun book for sure. And uh, Robert Schnackenberg, he doesn't exactly enjoy all of Bill Murray's films. In fact, he pretty much enjoys um, the Wes Anderson movies, Lost in Translation, Go, you know, Ghostbusters to an extent, but well, the his 80s stuff he doesn't seem to love. Uh, so it just mostly seems to be like his Wes Anderson stuff, Lost in Translation, and a few other things here and there. But a lot of the films in here actually get like one or two stars, so that was pretty interesting. Um, we were already talking during the Q and A. The the guy that was putting this thing together was like, "How can he not like Scrooge?" <laughs> so, and I asked him, "Do you get yeah get trouble from uh, from readers for excoriating all their favorite films?" He's like, "Yeah, of course." <laughs> Uh, but yeah, cool book, really interesting release. And uh, yeah, that's about it for pickups. So stick around, hang with the channel, and I'll be back shortly. Cheers.